Hi everyone, welcome to episode number one of Introception Questions with Kelly. And um, I'm Kelly Mahler, I'm author of the Introception Curriculum as well as other Introception resources. Uh, And I am going to be answering a frequently asked question that we've been hearing lately and that's how do you use the Introception Curriculum in a telehealth model or in telesessions. And um, we've been hearing from a lot of people that they have been using the curriculum already in telehealth sessions and it's been going really well they're having a lot of fun with their learners and um, we thank you for taking the time to share feedback and your experience with us Uh, for those of you that are just making this transition over into telehealth hopefully the tips that we've put together in this video will be very helpful to you Uh, I'll go briefly over our tips in this video but we also have more details in a free document that we've prepared for you And this document is filled with tips and tricks about how to use the curriculum in a telehealth setting. Um, And you can find that document on my website at www.kelly-mahler.com. If you go under the resources section and then click on printables, you'll find the document there. Um, So tip number one is, of course, prepare for your session. And you're going to have to be a little creative and looking through the lesson plan and pick and choose the items that will be successful successful in a telehealth setting. So most of the most of the lessons, the full lesson will um, is doable in a virtual telehealth set situation. Um, but you have to look through especially the focus area experiments and think about which experiments are doable and which are not doable given your certain learner. Um, so for some learners, they will have a caregiver present. And if that caregiver is willing, you can ask them to gather some of the materials needed for the focus area experiments ahead of time. Many of these materials are household materials that people have lying around the house, like uh, lotion or a container of warm water, a container of warm or of cold water, ice cubes, um, just everyday household objects like that. Um, so if the caregiver is willing, have them gather that before um, ahead ahead of time, Um, but not always is a caregiver present for many different reasons. And if that's the case, that's okay. Um, Just think through the focus area experiments and consider which experiments can you do without any materials on the other end. And you might have to take an experiment, for example, One of the experiments for the lesson on hands and all the different ways your hands can feel is holding a hand warmer. And if that material is not available to the learner on the other end, then think about how can you create a different experiment that will evoke a similar sensation within the hand. So when someone's holding a hand warmer, maybe they're experiencing a warm feeling hand or maybe it's a moist feeling or a sweaty feeling. So um, a different way that you can get that sensation without any special material is doing ha breaths into the hand like this. Um, And so that can be a focus area experiment that you include in your telesession for targeting those um, sensations within the hand. So you just have to really consider your experiments and make some adaptations as need be. If you're struggling with coming up with some alternative focus area experiments, we have the interception activity cards. We have 170 of them. They're all focus area experiments that require no special materials. So they're very ideal for this telehealth uh, setting. Um, Tip number two is probably common sense for for most of you is involving the caregiver whenever possible. Um, Not only does the caregiver serve as another set of hands on the opposite side of the screen, but the caregiver, you're also, through having the caregiver participate in your session, you're translating skills in building IA to the caregiver so that they can carry it out after or in between your telesessions. Um, but like I said before, it's not always possible to have the caregiver present and that, that is okay. Okay, so tip number three is you have to consider how you are going to be using visual supports in your session. For those of you that are familiar with the interoception curriculum, visual support is a big piece of it, and that is for many different reasons. Um, So consider how will you project through screen sharing a descriptor menu that is supporting um, the 
lesson that you're on. Maybe you're going to project the focus area experiments or a list of them. Um, consider how are you going to project a body check. Um, you can make a PowerPoint slide with a little body check form and we have pictures of how to do all of these different visual supports in the document that I referred to in the beginning of this video. Um, and again, you can find that on my website at uh, www.kelly-mahler.com and it's completely free. We wanted you to have as much access to this um, support as possible. Um, so make sure you are thinking through your visual supports and how you will project them on the screen via screen sharing during your session because that is a really important part of the curriculum. And we gave you lots of different, really creative ways um, of doing that in the document that we provided. Um, so tip number four is to increase predictability. Uh, right now, especially in um, the state of things, many of us have high levels of anxiety and we're very dysregulated and things are ve feeling very unpredictable. So we need to make sure that our, ses our sessions or tele-sessions feel really predictable. And um, we can do that by providing a visual schedule at the, at the beginning of each of our sessions and we can project that on the screen. You can make a schedule in a PowerPoint slide and project that onto the screen in the beginning of the session and throughout the session so that the learner knows what to expect. They also know exactly when the session is over. Um, and even if a learner is having so much fun with you during doing all of the work in the curriculum, which many of our learners love all of the activities in the interception curriculum, it's still we still need to keep in mind that even just by nature of being um, socially participating with us in doing a lot of different activities can just be taxing, even if it's fun. So having a very close end to that task, to knowing when our session is going to be over, can give the learner an idea of how long they need to persist and spend their energy and it can make it very predictable and make them more successful um, in being with us. We have an example of how you can create a visual schedule in the document that I've been referring to um, throughout this video. Um, and also it's important to preview your next telesession so you can let them know, oh, so next time we meet, we'll be talking about all the different ways that your nose can feel or all the different ways that your heart can feel. Um, and just so they know kind of what is upcoming. Um, and then tip number five is you want to consider all the different methods of positive practice that you can encourage the learner to use in between your telesessions. And so I think the easiest one is using IA on the fly and helping the caregiver understand how to use IA on the fly prompts. Um, in each lesson, we uh, provide an IA on the fly form in the downloadable materials that you can simply email uh, to the caregiver and um, they can learn to talk the interoception talk during daily activities and just helping their their learner become better able to notice and connect their body signals during these daily activities. Um, another great practice um, strategy is focus area experiments. So the caregiver could even repeat the experiments that you do during your telesession and give their, their learner more practice, or they can use naturally occurring focus area experiments. So we do so many different things throughout our days that evoke stronger feelings within different body parts and they are amazing times. Um, they, they're amazing opportunities to use IA on the fly prompts to help the learner begin to notice and describe sensations within their body. Um, so if you want a list of these naturally occurring focus area experiments, you can also find those under our resource section um, for free under the printables. It's called an interoception activity list, and that would be a great thing to share with the caregivers and learners that you're supporting. Um, and then finally, we have body checks. And if, if desired and the learner or the caregiver are looking for more ways to practice building IA in between your telesessions, they can, of course, complete body checks. And they might not look like our standard body check when we have the laminated file folder. Um, we could get more creative and we have some ideas on the document that we put together for you. Um, but some of these ideas you can just complete a body check on a wipe off board or on a piece of paper. Um, so we have pictures of different ways that you can adapt the body check 
on that form. So check that out. And then finally, last but not least is tip number six. And that it is all about regulation, self-care and realistic expectations during this time. Um, I think this is important for all of us. We are all dysregulated. We are all experiencing changes in our routine. And I think that it's really important that um, we set very small goals for all, for all of us, for the therapist or the professional, for the caregiver, for the um, learner especially. And even if our learner makes it through five minutes of a tele-session, that is a major accomplishment for some of these individuals. So I think we just need to set our expectations really small and celebrate the milestones and the accomplishments that we are all achieving during this time. So I hope that this video, I know that it's a lot of information. Please feel free to reach out and post your questions in the comment section underneath this video. Um, please share your experiences. Um, if you have tips to share with other people to make tele-sessions more successful um, when using the interception curriculum, please comment below. Um, and I hope that you enjoy all of the free resources that we're trying to support you with. Uh, until our next episode, Goodbye.